Welcome to Our Saviors. We're so glad that you can join us for our online worship. If this is your first time, we're so glad that you're here. And if you've been with us throughout the weeks and months, welcome back. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, bless us as we, your sheep, gather to worship you. May we be fed and nourished that we may then go and feed your lambs. Amen. We'll continue with our confession and forgiveness. Uh, I'll speak the words, and uh, you can uh, calm your heart and uh, be able to have the chance to offer up your sins for forgiveness to the Lord. Let us pray. O oh, merciful God, help your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Send us your Holy Spirit that we may fully admit our sin, receive your forgiveness, and so live in the gift of life that Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, gives us. Amen. We'll take a moment uh, in silence to confess our sins to the Lord. O oh God, we admit that we are bound by sin and by ourselves cannot break free. We have failed, sinning against you in thought, word, and action both in what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you, O Lord, and we have not loved our neighbors nor ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us so that we may be renewed and so led forward again in your will and ways. Amen. God, in his mercy, has given his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. And for his sake, then, God forgives us all of our sins. In Jesus' name, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I was been a mystery And all my life I've been told that I belong At the end of the line With all the other not quite And all men never get it right But it turns out That the ones you've been looking for All this time Cause I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody All about somebody Everybody's got a purpose So when I hear the devil stop talking to me Saying who you think you are Say I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody And all about somebody Who saved my soul And ever since you rescued me You gave my heart a song to sing I'm living for the world reading from the Gospel of John, Jesus tells Peter to tend and feed his sheep. But what do tend and feeding look like? And what does that have to do for, for us today? Well, listen as I seek to unpack that. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, come to us today as you came to Peter Open our hearts to your love that we might also say, Lord, you know I love you. And help us as we seek to live as your followers, feeding and tending those we meet. Amen. Reading is from the 21st chapter of John. 
After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we'll go with you. And they went out and got into the boat. But that night, they caught nothing. And just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach. But the disciples didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. For they were not far from land, but about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they'd finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Well, dear friends in Christ, grace to you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. I'd like to begin today with a story about Paul Kalinthi that Andy Root shares in his book, the pastor in the secular age. Paul Kalinthi was a brilliant young man, educated at Stanford and Yale, who excelled in his training. As a scientific practitioner, he'd been told and had fully embraced that his patients were problems and that the surgeon's job was to eradicate the problem in the best way possible. The patient's never a person but a tumor causing seizures. And the goal is to solve the riddle of seizures, keeping the patient alive, and never contemplating the life and the connections that this person inhabits. But when Paul Kalinthi was on the brink of being a, su a successful surgeon, he became a patient struck tragically with brain cancer. Kalinthi now saw things differently. He was forced to look at disease and illness, not from the level of pro the problem-solving surgeon, but from that of a living, 
yearning, sick person. He could no longer see the patient as a movie set where the doctor plays out the drama of fighting the disease like the surgeon Luke Skywalker and the diseased Darth Vader crossing lightsabers as the unfortunate patient passively hosts the battle in her body. Kalinti came to realize that what he most longed for as a patient was not sharp expertise of the surgeon, but the ministry of the surgeon's person. Kalinti recognized that the only way to truly heal someone is to create the space for them to share their story, to give your person to them, accompanying them in their journey of sickness that too often leads to death. Kalinti's job now as surgeon patient was to be a pastor who creates space for ministry that shares deeply in personhood, inviting the sharing of stories as much as the articulation of diagnoses and procedures. And seeking to articulate this new perspective, Kalinti shares, had I been more religious in my youth, I might have become a pastor, for it was the pastoral role I sought. He, he sums all this up in, a, in his beautiful book, and he's, he describes his pastoral role as a physician. Quoting Paul Kalinti's book, When Breath Becomes Air, Andy continues, for 35, a 35-year-old sat in her ICU bed, a sheen of terror on her face. She'd been shopping for her sister's birthday when she'd had a seizure. A scan showed that a benign brain tumor was pressing on her right frontal lobe. But I could see the idea of brain surgery terrified her more than most. She was lonesome, and in a strange place, having been swept out of the familiar hubbub of a shopping mall into the alien beeps and alarms and antiseptic smells of an ICU. She would likely refuse surgery if I launched into a detached spiel detailing all the risks and possible complications. I could do so and document her refusal in the chart and consider my duty discharged, and then move on to my next task. Instead, with her permission, I gathered her family with her, and together we calmly talked through the options. And as we talked, I could see the enormousness of the choice she faced dwindle into a difficult but understandable decision. I had met her in a space where she was a person instead of a problem to be solved. And the operation went smoothly. And she went home two days later, never seized again. I share Kalinti's story because I think it gets at the heart of today's interaction between Peter and Jesus. As you remember, during Jesus' trial, Peter makes three denials concerning Jesus. In John's Gospel, there's a subtle but important difference from the other Gospels. In John's Gospel, Peter denies being a disciple, a follower of Jesus. This is more than Peter failing to be a good friend to Jesus. This is a denial of Peter's identity as one seeking to live as Jesus lived, as being a bearer of Jesus' mission and purpose in the world. Jesus invites Peter to claim being one through whom God would continue to bring healing, restoration, forgiveness, wholeness, as he shares the good news about who God really is. doing all the things that Jesus 
the good shepherd did as he walked the earth. Well, maybe, Jesus, uh, maybe Peter denied him that night of Jesus' trial because he had trouble trusting that God could or would work through him. Is he thinking, I'm only a fisherman? And maybe it's for that reason he goes, decides to go fishing now. How about you? Do you have trouble trusting that God will work through you? In today's reading, Jesus comes to meet Peter and you precisely in the place where you need to be met. Jesus doesn't leave Peter in the futility of fishing all night and catching nothing. He supplies an amazing abundance of fish, feeds them breakfast, and then, like a good surgeon, goes right to the heart of the healing that Peter's need. Standing around a charcoal file, remember, reminiscent of the one that Peter stood around on the night of Jesus' trial, Jesus invites Peter three times to confess his love and then recommissions him as a disciple as Jesus says, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. In doing so, Jesus invites Peter to trust that God will be working through him as he brings healing, restoration, forgiveness, wholeness, and shares the good news of who God is. And if you read the book of Acts, you'll discover that's exactly what happens. Like Paul Calinthi and the Apostle Paul, Peter rediscovers his sense of purpose and weakness. Cancer turned Paul Calinthi's world upside down. In Acts 9, Paul talks about being knocked to the ground and struck blind by Jesus on the road to Damascus, and then later about a thorn in the flesh. Peter's denial, his public failure as a disciple, is attested in all four of the Gospels. You ever feel like you're a failure? Do you find yourself all too aware of your weaknesses and shortcomings? Do you struggle to find your sense of meaning and purpose? The pandemic has certainly about, brought about those feelings for me and for many of my colleagues. I struggled and often felt like I failed in finding creative ways to connect to others as persons in real and meaningful ways through the disruption of the pandemic. And that failure has weighed heavy on my heart. And like Peter, who went out and wept bitterly after his denial, I've also grieved this failure. You may be one who has felt abandoned by me and the church when you needed me most. And for that, I beg your forgiveness. But I also know I'm not alone. I know that you, in your own ways, may also have found your desire to connect on a personal level disrupted. And you also may have grieved. Maybe you still are. And so, then listen carefully to Jesus as he speaks to Peter. Jesus does not blame or shame Peter. He does not ask for Peter's repentance. Jesus does not ask three times, do you love me, to necessarily remind Peter of his threefold denier or to test him or to trap him. Jesus affirms who Peter needs to be. The disciple Jesus needs him to be. And the disciple Jesus needs Peter to be is to be a shepherd now, to be a pastor now. And being a pastor is far more about how you do what you're doing 
than what you do. And that's why Paul Calenti could talk about being pastoral as a physician. He discovered the soft sound of Jesus' commission to feed and to tend, playing in the universe and the hum of the resurrection that had the power to transform even death into life through authentic human connection. It had the power that scientific know-how didn't to provide new possibility that opened the way to physical healing. And I believe that's what Luther meant when he talked about the priesthood of all believers. He could have just as easily said the pastoring of all believers. Pastoring in this sense is not about having gone to seminary or working for a church. It's about who you and I are called to be by virtue of our baptism. And it's what it means to be people who follow Jesus. And it's not necessarily even about our perception of ourselves, your perception of yourself. I mean, really. If you stop and think about it, it's not surprising that Peter replied, I am not, when asked if he was a disciple. Hear Jesus as he speaks to you today, reaffirming your baptismal call to feed and tend people. Hear in that call Jesus' affirmation of who you are as his follower. Hear Jesus as he tells Peter and tells you and me, I believe in you. I know who you are and I love you. And yes, you are exactly the disciple I need, the disciple the world needs for God and for the world. Blessings on your life your witness, and your living as followers. What you do matters. Amen. confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all people in need. Jesus, like Peter, we can have a hard time trusting that you can work through us and our lives. Teach us how to tend to your people and to feed your people. As importantly, help us to learn how to allow others to tend to us and to feed our hearts and souls with your love. Open our lives to learn, grow, and then do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Master of the universe, our world is broken and divided by mistrust and hate that causes injustice, oppression, violence, and finally war. We need you now, today, to be present in Ukraine, Ethiopia, Yemen, Syria, and all of the places where violence and war ravages the people and the land. Lead the refugees to safety. Care for the hurt and wounded. Comfort the sorrowful. Change the minds and hearts of the hateful. Silence the guns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healer of our every ill, bring wholeness and healing to all who are in need. Be them fighting COVID or cancer, struggling with MS or Parkinson's, recovering from an injury or a surgery. Give them the blessing of your presence and your life. Today, we specifically lift up to you Wyatt, Kari, Roger, and all who we hold in our hearts. Walk with those who are grieving the death of a loved one. Give them your solace and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit, fill us with your fruits of self-control, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, patience, peace, joy, and love that we may th share them through our lives. And when we fail, cleanse us by your forgiveness that we can try again and again. Lead us today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we give all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and love. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, it's been quite a while since we've shared a celebration. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> um, but today I do want to celebrate all of those who have supported our youth here at Our Saviors, especially in the past two months, by giving offerings at the meals that the youth have served at, uh, those of you who have donated towards the baked goods that the youth made on Easter morning, and those of you who brought home birdhouses made by the youth. Your offerings and gifts are helping immensely to support the youth to go to camp, on mission trips to Denver and Alaska, and to provide for further ministry. So we just want to give you a, a large thank you and celebrate your support. I encourage you to go to our website at www.osel.org uh, for further updates on uh, what's happening here at the, in the life of our church and what is uh, coming up in the fall, uh, coming weeks and months. 
Um, we're so uh, glad that you can join us uh, each week or um, those weeks that uh, you're out of town or that you've just come across us. We're so thankful that you can worship with us. Uh, please receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. God of justice, Savior to all, came to rescue the weak and the poor, chose to serve and have called us freely we've received now freely we will give we must go live to feed the hungry stand beside the broken we must go stepping forward keep us from just seeing move us into action go to act justly every day loving mercy in every way walking humbly